Do you remember that flying tank without a visible engine that took center stage a few months ago in our last video about Stokes Space? The Stokes Space Hopper that showed us how to turn space flight on its head. A lot has changed since June and not just in the literal sense. With new hot fires and structural tests bringing NOVA closer to its first orbital flight. Stokes not only has $260 million more in his pocket, but has also achieved milestones that even make skeptics think twice. Let's dive into the world of this underdog, who is making space a bit more accessible for everyone with ex-Blue Origin talent and Bill Gates' money. And along the way, we will learn a few lessons from the tough school of rocket building. First of all, for all of you who are new here, Stokes Space was founded in 2020 by Andy Lapser and Tom Feldman. This is the team that doesn't see full reusability as a nice to have, but as a must. Their Nova rocket, a 30 meter mid-class beast, is supposed to carry up to three tons into low Earth orbit with costs under $1 million per launch. The centerpiece, the Zenith engines for the first stage, full flow stage combustion monsters running on methane and oxygen, producing around 320 tons of thrust. And the upper stage, a dromedary with its ring of 30 small hydrogen engines, which not only provide thrust, but also serve as a smart heat shield. It is actively cooled, self-regulating and designed for 100 flights. The whole thing is based on the aerospike principle, which adapts to the pressure, whether in a vacuum or in the atmosphere. Sounds like science fiction, it was until the hopper test in 2023 proved that it works. But now comes the update part that's going to blow you away. Stoke completed a Series C round in January this year with a whopping $260 million. That brings their total capital to over 400 million. With investors like Bill Gates' Breakthrough Energy Ventures and the United States Space Force on board, the money goes directly into the hardware. In March, Stoke was selected for the National Security Space Launch Phase 3 Lane 1, which means that NOVA is expected to handle not only civilian satellites, but also sensitive military missions. Responsive space access, meaning launch within 24 hours. For newcomers, it's like Uber for orbit, except it's about satellites that fill communication gaps or track threats. And in April, the Andromeda engine fired at over 100% power, a hot fire that pushed the limits and proved that this ring-shaped design is not only stable, but also more efficient than ever before. But wait, that's not all. Since our last video, Stoke has revised the Andromeda design and announced Andromeda 2 in February. It's lighter, has fewer parts and an integrated metal heat shield that's cooled with liquid hydrogen. Regenerative cooling like in engine chambers. But for re-entry, the heat of re-entry drives the turbo pump, pumping more coolant through as it gets hotter. Self-regulating, no propellant wasted. In June, after more than 53,000 seconds of test burns and 43 iterations, they finalized the thruster for the flight. Imagine an engineer in Moses Lake, Washington, staring at the screen as the thing fires up for the last time before orbit. Pure adrenaline, because that's the moment when theory becomes reality. And the structures. What I find particularly impressive is that they achieved the full burn duration of 200 seconds for the first stage ignition of their Zenit engine. That always looks so easy in videos, but not many managed to do it. Here you can see how a first stage tank was tested to failure in order to validate analyses. We know these kinds of tests from the so-called Ken Crushers in the Starship program. Not small steps, but leaps. When it comes to infrastructure, Stoke is going all out at Space Launch Complex 14 in Cape Canaveral. The pad that sent John Glenn into orbit in 1962, 
A lot has happened there since June. This massive flame trench looks very similar to the one SpaceX has at Starbase and is almost finished. Lightning rods are still being installed, the supply tower is being opened, welding is being done and new steel is constantly being delivered to complete the launch table, the tower and the flame trench. Oh, I don't know if this impression is just because Stoke has a strong presence on social media or if it's because they're really the fastest after SpaceX. With other companies it often looks like the entire company is working on a single project. Even then, everything moves in slow motion, unlike Stoke. But that's subjective, as long as they haven't started yet. In August, they started their second stage structural test cryo operations over 100 pressure cycles automated by flight software, axial and shear loads, all with margins that exceed design specifications. And now, in September, the second stage structural qualification is complete. That's not a coincidence. Stoke is building their infrastructure for daily launches and Nova is supposed to be able to carry out hundreds of launches per year, which is only possible with full and rapid reusability. Old slow companies that still believe reusability is not possible or only partially feasible and useful. They will tell you that there is no market for so many launches and that these companies are not to be taken seriously. These advances make Nova a serious competitor, not only for Starship's mega payloads, but also for the mid-market where precision and speed matter. Just think of a researcher in Vienna who needs a climate satellite experiment. Instead of waiting years and paying millions, Nova could get the whole thing done in weeks for a fraction of the cost. The partnership with the Space Force is driving this, but it also raises questions. Will a military focus slow down civilian use, or is it the booster stoke needs to become independent? And the complexity of these rings? A balancing act that could become costly if it fails, as we've seen with other newcomers. But Stoke is testing relentlessly and with Gates' money backing them. Do you feel confident? The orbital test at the end of 2025 could be the moment when Nova is catapulted from the test bench into history. But be careful, we're talking about Stoke's plans here. As with SpaceX and any other space company, the schedules are often ambitious but hard to keep. So don't be sad if their maiden flight gets pushed to next year. Delays are the norm in this business and there's no shame in that unless you show up 20 years late or never make it to the reuse party at all. By the way, if you want news like this and other space news delivered straight to your inbox, subscribe now for free to the brand new Mars Chronicon newsletter on marschronicon.space. At the end of the day, Stokes shows that the path to the stars is made up of iterations. Hot fires redesigns chaos. Since June, they haven't just talked, they've delivered from Andromeda 2 to Qualified Stage 2 with a fresh $260 million in transfers. That's the stuff real revolutions are made of, even if the orbit still holds a few stumbling blocks. For us Mars dreamers, Nova could be the truck that cheaply delivers habitats and fuel depots. Are you as hyped as I am for the first flight? Write in the comments what you think of Stoke. If you enjoyed this update on Stoke Space, subscribe to Mars Chronicles and leave a thumbs up. A huge thank you goes out to everyone. If you also want early access to our videos, you can find all the information about it below in the video description. My name is Serwin and that was Mars Chronicles. Thanks for tuning in. Paras, Para, Ad, Astra, 